Hey guys, black leather. <laughs> oh wait, nope, nope. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's in my notes. <laughs> Man, that was uh, that was a dynamite drop in, John. Yep, thank you. I tried. Just like I love yeah. how. Okay, I just want to get this out of the way right now. I love how Tyler Maine looks like he just like he's about to audition for like the world movie. <laughs> yes, he does. I have a question about Tyler Maine. I'm gonna get into much much later. I have probably a few bit of tri- bits of trivia about Tyler Maine you probably didn't know. Oh God! Right. I, and I'll never unlearn them, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably will. Um. So, hello, everyone. Welcome to this. Uh, ver- I, I'm kind of excited for this episode, actually. Um. Uh. Our uh. Our movie special for X Men One from 2000. We're going to do a basically a series of these leading into the release of Dark Phoenix. Um. Mm-hmm. No, we are not doing every X Men film. We're I'm not. I'm not insane. watching Dark Phoenix. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, we thought we thought if, if you, if we you thought, have me back, for the love of God, don't make me on for Origins Wolverine, even though I can get. But, the uh, well, I, I don't think we're. I think we're just doing the first three. Um, yeah, yeah. First. yeah, because there's no reason. Here's the thing. There's at this point, this is the end of this little X Men. This is the end of the X Men saga from Fox as we know it. I was gonna say, what about um, yeah. the um, Fassbender trilogy? Um, well, that technically counts as part of this franchise, um, right? But I think those movies are, are those movies are like. They're, they're too new to really go back and revisit them and go like, wow, so much has changed. Um, oh, yeah. And, and like, I, I have... Also, we have a 10-year little, rule. <laughs> we have a 10-year rule and like with a, with a few exceptions like that that really are special exceptions too. And like, I don't have anything to say about Days of Futures Past that isn't just like, right. holy, holy fuck, do I love this movie? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm in, I don't know, I'm not... I suppose in the minority, but like I guess in the minority, there's like this group potentially who like really love Days of Futures Past, whilst knowing it has problems. Um, and uh, like X Men Apocalypse, who could give a shit? I mean, I I, yeah. I I'm fine with X Men Apocalypse. I admit there is problems, but I don't hate it. Wasn't the uh, old? Yeah, no, that's a that's a uh-huh. bad film. Um, it's a bad. <laughs> it's just a bad film. But yeah, hmm. but um, and like X Men Origins, why bother? Um. Yeah, you know, I mean, those first ten minutes are fun. Um, yeah, you know. uh, about what's her name for Mad Men not talking, right? <laughs> oh no, that's first class. That's no, that's, that's Wolverine. No, that's first class. I think no, it's that's first class. Yeah, it's a different talking, actress. Wait, wait, hold on, January. Talking, wait, hold on, hold on, January Jones. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was uh, first class. I'm sorry, I forgot that they recast that character. We have two different versions. Yes. Of this. Oh, we'll, 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 here's the thing. We will eventually talk about that because the the and the problem I guess with covering these movies as a series is that at some point, even before you get to Days of Futures Past, the continuity is fucked. Oh, there's mm-hmm. several ways. It is, it is, it is, continuity got fucked even, after Last Stand. <laughs> even with um, uh, Days of Futures Past, the continuity was fucked. Because oh. they had created such well, a, they have, it's it's still like there, it still leaves questions because like yeah. I love the Avengers past, but there's there's the mystique problem because yeah, if, there is. If oh, this we, went it, down in the '60s, then how did how was mystique even part of like uh, Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants if if she's eventually killed and assembled into the fucking uh, Sentinel Project? <sighs> Um, right. That's a, I think the problem is you're looking for logic there, but we'll get into that. Well, uh, I mean, it's a time, yeah, and a time for a movie, but still, like, if you're if you're saying this movie is to correct all the all the time plot holes we have, and then you make a few more, like you didn't really get the job done. Yeah, it's uh, just, I feel like that that timeline is so irrevocably fucked. Like, there's nothing they could have done. That's why I think Logan works so well, and that's the other thing. Like, we, Logan just came out, and we did a movie special for Logan. There's no reason to do and that. That movie um, is still better than Dark Knight. Yes, it is. Yep. Um but um, so uh, real quick before we get into it, uh, I'm Connor McGraw. Um, bit of a different lineup tonight. No Eric tonight. Um, so I'm Connor McGraw. Who else is here? Uh, Arlen Harrow. Uh, I am Hunter Downpour, aka the Consummate Professional. That's right. Who is always here on time when he says he will be. Yeah. There's yeah. not a monster mash that hasn't been recorded yet. That, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that was totally Hunter's responsibility. I'm not yeah. calling him out on air or anything. Drop the ball. <laughs> uh, I'm John Scott. I just I, they they tell me to show up and I come. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, John, John Scott is the hired help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> John, John, ring a bell. 
Come, yes, come here, come hither and podcast. <laughs> yes, sir. John, do we know that fellow? Well, you know a lot of fellows. Um, you know a lot of fellows. Get the, get the rifle and shoot him out of the property. I, I say, Lewis, where is John? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm Lou Gonzalo. What happens to a, what happens to a toad when it's hit by lightning? Oh, oh you God. Know what? My Is other, that where we're going to start? My other, okay. dumb it, it, I, my other opening bit was going to be like, do you know what happens when a turd gets struck by lightning? Oh, you're giving your <laughs> better accent. The first thing that, that always happens when a turd gets struck by lightning. No, you have to do her <laughs> very uh, bad. It, it, it flies 75 miles through the air and is never seen again. Yeah. Th- so let's oh. hold a memorial real quick for Ray Park's career. Um, because uh, he needs one. Um, I remember the last big thing he was in was G.I. Joe, and he was also in the King of Fighters movie. There's yeah. a King of Fighters movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The King of Fighters movie with Maggie Q as my. What? Yeah. Is what? Maggie Q as my? Is that as bad as the girl from Smallville in Chun Li? Hang, so- hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've seen, okay. I saw the King of Fighters. No, wait, no. I saw the Battle Arena Toshinden movie. Um, Ooh, it, was an, it was animated. It's an anime movie. It's different. Um, was this anime or was this live action? Live action. What oh, the God. fuck? I think you hey, have been because I've, I've, I've definitely seen the King of Fight. Was it a King of Fighters or was it a Fatal Fury movie? Yeah, it was, um, there's, there's a, King of Fighters, there's a movie. movie. There's a. Was there a guy with a jaguar head? That's that's Tekken. Yes. Um, oh, so there, we'll talk about that movie before we move into X Men. No, King so Harry Bogard. Fortunately. Uh, Terry Bogard in that movie is played by the director of John Wick. Of course. <laughs> what? Right. <laughs> Yo, okay, for real though, that's awesome. I love that. Um, right? The second movie has Dave Batista in it. Well, because he's in everything. Of course he does. Is he? Yeah. A- yeah. I forget. I don't think he plays King. I think he plays. Um... Oh, fuck. I, who's the other? Uh, Mar- I think it's, I think it's uh, Craig Marduk is what he who he plays. Oh, he plays it. Marduk. That's actually really good. Casting. I think so. Let me check that hey, out. Hang on, is he in the Tekken movie? I'm not seeing his cast and his name on here. No, if they, if they got, these they, movies are more interesting than the movie we're actually supposed to be talking about. <laughs> <right now. laughs> well, we get it. We'll get into it. But this movie is not not bad. It's fine. Like it's good. <sighs> It's, it's aggressively mediocre, is how I describe it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess the best I'll way give, I'll give it. It's, it's, it's a movie carried by like three yeah. people. I would even say uh, it's not aggressively mediocre. I would say it's ambiguously yeah. mediocre because yeah. it's not yeah. right. Here's the thing: it's certainly not middle of the road because of lack of effort. It's middle of the road mm-hmm. because no one knows what the fuck to do with this stuff well, yet. Any scene that is not yeah. with Patrick Stewart or E. McKellen is meh. Yeah. At best, mm-hmm. so, but, yeah. Because, this, like, because, I feel like it's weird because of the time. Because what other option do we have? We had Blade, the like two years prior, which was you know, I still think like a kick ass movie, but before that, Batman and Robin, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, like, well, um, we're, yeah. We're, just, we're just starting to come out of the time where people mm-hmm. don't know how to take comic book properties and adapt them to film. No, which um, I would say, like, Blade is what kind of like because he. They bought that movie for nothing, or like the rights to it, and it yeah. made a shit ton of money. Yeah, and I, yeah, think, I, mean, I hate the whole like X Men did it first. Like, no, Blade did it first. No, no Blade it to, be it honest, first. to be honest, like one of the first comic book movies that was taken seriously and worked was The Crow. Oh yeah, The Crow was like. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I feel like that was like an outlier in like a whole. It is. Also, it is. That it also is... got the kind of Dark Knight thing where the guy right. died yeah. in the filming, so people watched for the freakness. Yeah. And the, I, the I other thing is, like, like, the book is a big deal now because of, like, the cult that kind of grew around it. But nobody knew who the crow was. No, really. it's also weird. aggressively 90s. Yeah, no one really yes. cared, really. Yeah, and the th- I think but the, mm-hmm. like, I, don't, I don't think time has really done any uh, uh, harm to the crow. I think time has actually made the no. crow very much of a novelty as much as a good movie. Like, you watch yeah. that, you're like, mm-hmm. one, because that movie takes place in a city and in a time period that is completely out of our world. Like, it's it's not our reality at all. No, yeah. I know. Um, Isn't it Detroit? It's supposed to be, but it's not ever... Exp- I don't think it's ever explicitly stated. I like, feel like they say it's Detroit. But what's my, funny... My, no, they my hint at it a lot. Is that Ernie Hudson is in that movie. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like... The when, coolest when, man alive. My thing is, when you watch The Warriors, they say New York, but you're like, that's not New York. That's a... Mm-hmm. 
like a fantasy New York. It's like um, it's, uh, like, it's kind of New York. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's, it's not New York name like only. You can identify thi- well, no, because you can identify things in it, but like it's a New York that could only ex- be in that movie. Yeah, it's an exaggerated. Mm-hmm. It's a cartoonish version of the horrible New York that existed at that time. Yeah, because like the idea of New York being dominated by, I think they said sixty thousand. Um, Active gang yeah. members who were in like six, six is, different gangs who were having a common which is insane. Which, that that, would, that awesome. would never happen. You, the police would be there in seconds. Like, oh, well, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. New York of like the seventies and eighties was not a good place. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, there was a time where it would work. It would be the seventies when yeah. like people were considering leaving New York. <laughs> like, yeah. like but, there, was, there was talk of just like driving away and like yeah. by New York. <laughs> But the thing yeah. with the words that it also <laughs> opens up says in a different time in a different place. Like they yeah. tell you right at the get go, like this is not your reality. So I think that, that's how the crow works. But like, um, but back kinda, to kind of kind of going off and going back to this movie because I know we are literally avoiding talking about this movie as much as we can. Yeah, we are. Uh, it that. feels like it. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, in all the movies they go in the not too distant future. Oh yeah, I wrote that yeah. down in my notes. I was like, wait, when does that mean? I mean, it, yes, okay, I, there's something I've been bringing it, up many times before. This is why um, you said what you said. 2019 in the movie. Please. Yes, this is why I said what I said, because you see postcards of the two towers on Rogue's, like, map or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if we assume that she got those postcards recently, it's not because, like, oh, I'm sad about the two towers and I want to be reminded of them. It's because they're still up. Well, yes, that movie that's... also takes, was made before that happened. It was 2000. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. So we can assume that this is a universe where there are still two towers. Well, not too distant future. Um, it be like a week from now. It, it, yes, but I, I've always interpreted that as like it's either 2005 or it's 2015. Yeah, it's one of the two. And like uh, Mad Max opens with that. But if you talk to George Miller, basically what he says is it takes place sometime after next Wednesday where every bad thing you can think of has all happened at once. Yes. Right, it's a sort of a hypothetical yeah. time, but it's not. It's not any specific period. I do um, and that's the thing. Like a lot of these other X Men movies have opened up like that. Uh, X Men: Days of Future Past brings that back. Uh, last, Logan last actually brings brought it that back. Also, last I guess, brought it back. Um, as bad as that movie is, they said in the beginning with that whole simulation scene in the not too distant future with things blowing up around mm-hmm. you. Well, yeah, yeah, that's I, the similar. It's changed a little bit. I did love how, which I don't remember the other movies doing this, how like political this movie was. Oh, it is. It's very political. Is, like, really, I, th- I think one of the reasons this movie was as big as a hit as it was was because it wasn't about the slam, bam, wham superhero stuff. It was more about the nuances. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, the thing is, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I think what made this movie work in the end is because they took what's what as what what's features still have in the comics is like these. It's othering. It's yes. it's oh you're you're yeah. different than us. Ugh. Oh, like, like, X Men is like they're, yeah, they're it's, it's, it's like the yeah it's it's a metaphor for racism uh, uh, or, like, actually, or like or or like segregation or, or no, um which we'll get to it when we get to the end. I actually think it's more of a uh, about homosexuality that too. But it was, I think yeah. they pull that way more yeah. in the sequel than they do here. Yeah, they because do. I think it, it, yeah. Yeah, because the idea of hiding it and not wanting to yeah. tell your parents and the, the terror of telling your your mm-hmm. loved one, like yeah. I have, there's a, something about me that I've been keeping secret that is different from society. Well, not just that. Know. Yeah, like Rogue, like everything yeah. around her and the thing of what she is might hurt people. Yeah, um, and her in her very specific situation that feels like a metaphor for AIDS and being oh, gay. And oh, definitely, yeah, and having some sort of react to Logan when we're in the bar in Alaska, yeah. And mm-hmm. with her, like, she can't be intimate with anybody because she will hurt them, yes, yeah, like an AIDS, like an AIDS victim, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, like, it's, I think it's very on the nose in some places, in, in ways that I don't think they would have been apparent in 2000 because people were still making like very egregious gay jokes at the time and they oh, were angry that ellen was gay it, it was not as pc as it is now well, to get to the we'll get it's to not the, as welcoming to yeah. the problematic issues with the director but i think it's one of the things that singer brought that worked in this movie mm-hmm. somebody who yeah. Is, yeah, alarmingly like, enough like it, it's yeah. 
it is, and we'll, we'll cover more of it when we get to the third part of this little review that we have. Um, because it's not going to be a traditional review. We're going to talk about key points of this movie that are important. Um, but to think that someone now David Hayter wrote this script, but to think that someone who is capable of what he's capable of could convey this so gracefully, I suppose, is a little mm-hmm. startling. But we'll get to that. Um, I will say the opening of this movie powerful stuff. Oh, I was going to say very much yeah. after watching Endgame I was just like, oh, this is another movie that opens in the heaviest way ever? And taking directly from the comics. Yes. It? I mean it, and it's it was good enough that like 10 years later they were like let's do that exact scene again and that's, yeah. let's just hold on it and like explore it. Because well, uh, that's how First Class opens. It opens yeah, with this scene. For those who, oh god, even even worse though because then you because this is general, whereas in first class, like they they narrow they go specific. Yes, yeah, like, they, they, they go. They, they show you the next scene. Yeah, um, it shows you how much yeah. of a piece of shit Sebastian Shaw is because, like, he is sitting there tormenting this kid psychologically slowly, mm-hmm. and like it, he, it's um in in first class because uh, the quarter is what he uses to kill his mother, right, or something like that, or. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like move the quarter, and then uh, Shaw shoots his mother, and then later on he uses the quarter, the to, quarter to kill, kill Shaw. Shaw. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, which he's I think more to kill other people. I think too that that is one of the most ghastly ways to kill someone I've ever seen because it's not like mm. he didn't shoot him in the head, he didn't stab him in the chest. He slowly pushes a piece of metal through his forehead until it just pops out the back of his head. Oh. Yeah, which ties back into another That's part in this movie that we kind of see. Yeah, and also mm. like uh, like um. It's it's so unflinching, and Magneto kills so many people in that movie horrifically that I think it works so fucking well. Like in the um, second yeah. movie, like the, they that's a through line throughout this these movies is like Magneto's powers is kind of like horrifying if he can like kill you with it. Magneto is mm-hmm. like I, it, I guess we can transition to like the mutants covered in this movie, and we'll start with Magneto, um, who has been one of the most consistent mutants in all of these films. Um, yeah. Uh, I could not have picked a better man to play him. Oh God, yeah. Um, and I love the yeah. fact that his and Patrick Stewart's uh friendship has lasted this long. It's been twenty years, and they still just go and hang out. Did you know Patrick Stewart hadn't had pizza until like five years ago? Oh, and he's yeah, a, it's amazing. He, was a, he posted on Twitter, and he's fucking adorable. Yeah, I think Ian McKellen <laughs> was the one who introduced him to it, and that's the most adorable thing I've ever heard. Um, I, that, I would that, want, that, a, that I would want a, like. Has his nice. elderly gay man who's his best friend who's like, let me show you about pizza. <laughs> I, I would just love just a separate comedy just starring the two of them where they're up to some wacky escapades or something. I don't know. Just make a movie with the two of them. Just in it. have them yeah. it just, just shoot a two-hour chess match between Professor X and Magneto, but have it ju- – it's just Patrick Stewart. Oh, gosh, right. No, they, yeah. no, they're, no, they're just being catty. Like, they're just <laughs> – <laughs> well, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie The Trip, where it's just Steve Coogan and a British friend of his driving, like yes, just I around in England. I want that, but Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. Just I was gonna say, just, uh, like, uh, Tom Cavanaugh and Grant Gustin from The Flash, shall we cover? Um, made a short film called uh, Grant and Tom. That is one film festival award. I think it's 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 them it's them playing themselves if they were both fucking losers, and they're just like nice. I think they attempt to rob a bank. There's a movie like that. Oh, there's a movie of, like going in style with that Morgan Freeman, and I can't remember who else was in it. But like, there are three guys who just older guys who just like, this is oh, Morgan Freeman, I think Michael Caine and Jack Nicholson. No, not Jack Nicholson. No, I definitely remember. It was, uh, yeah. big... Jack Nicholson can't remember lines anymore, so it's definitely oh, okay. It's, uh, it's, 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 the, it's the bucket list, though, right? Where that's just it's <laughs> <all> <laughs> that bucket list. I'm thinking of. Hang on, I think it's Alan Arkin with him too. I th- yeah, it is out. Uh, okay, anyway. Yeah, it's out. Okay. Anyway, I'm going back. This movie opens on Magneto, and um, we, Ian McKellen's version of Magneto has stuck around for quite a while. Well, um, well first, mm-hmm. we go through the opening credit sequence, which has not aged well. Uh, well, well, I, I don't want well, I, I I to linger too much on like the the. Yeah. the no, 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 it's fine. I was going to go over quickly yeah. and just say, "Hey, that opening credits is bad." Okay, move on to the next scene. Oh, well, they're, they're, I mean, they're it's all, fine they're though. All, they're all, well, they become like <laughs> for the as time the, as those movies progress. You're like these are bombastic and kind of just like burn, 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 like for yeah. no reason. Mm-hmm. And like and and I, the, the visual cues uh, yeah. don't tie into the film. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, weird. Um, so we have we have Magneto played by Ian McKellen. Everyone knows that. 
Um, he's astounding in this movie, as and he continued to be. Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Awful um, astounding. I don't think I could have... If you put a gun to my head, I wouldn't have picked anybody else. But yeah, I don't think there was anybody else. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I, I think I, it was like... Uh, okay, good. What do you say? Yeah. Would, would you not... Would you not cast Gary Sinise as Wolverine? <laughs> what the <laughs> fucking what? damn oh, you? <laughs> oh, guess who was supposed to be cast as Wolverine? Um, yeah. I think you're going to say Gary Sinise was almost Xavier. And actually, now that I think about it, like, you know what? Eh, maybe. I, I love I love looking at thing and reading that Bob Hoskins was considered for Wolverine. That oh, is. That well, is people have been saying that for years, though. They've said, people have said that they wanted Bob Hoskins or uh, fucking. Uh, God damn it. All these in Philadelphia it, but... fucking Oh yeah. uh, uh DeVito. Um, yeah, DeVito. Yeah, DeVito. Um people have been saying that for years. Yeah. So um we have Patrick Stewart as Professor Charles Xavier. Um I don't think we have to really uh, break down those two uh ca- th- that character and the actor uh at this point. Um we yeah. have uh Fam K Jensen as Jean Grey. Yep. Where where did this woman go? And why won't Hollywood use her anymore? Um, if she's not staring very, like, focusedly at somebody with their shirt off or choking them to death, uh, Hollywood doesn't want her, uh, apparently. So. And here's the thing, like, I, not to, because I think she's actually wonderful in this, and she's awesome in, um, uh... Well, in, mixed up with Taken, the whole trilogy. She's great in that, and also, like, she, uh, the House on Haunted Hill remake, I kind of love aesthetically, and she is, like fucking amazing in that movie with jeffrey she, rush she's good in golden eye and then yeah. she was in nip tuck for i think like two years yeah. and also she's one, of the, most know stunning, she's one of the most stunning women i've ever laid eyes on um and mm-hmm. I think, like, she, is, she is beautiful in the in the hollywood way we were like did you create her out of out of like a machine or something yeah. she's just perfect um yeah but but this, but this cast is also like full of the most beautiful people in the world um um, mm-hmm. They wouldn't for last. Uh, James Marsden as Scott Summers Cyclops. Um, yeah. Yeah. The man with the worst agent in Hollywood. Um, I, um, I mean, no, he's on Westworld. Yeah. He wasn't Superman yeah. Returns. As bad as that movie is, I yeah, think. Yeah, Superman Returns. Everybody's favorite film. Yeah. Superman okay. Returns. The movie right the movie. I don't think he had a bad career. It's just the movie, the movie that killed no, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm saying is. He could have made other choices that would not make him who he is now, like, and he would be a much more respected actor. Like, he could easily be in a very different class. And also, like, he is good movies. He's in Hairspray. Hold on, hold on. What I just mentioned, I think, is what most people remember about him from this movie series specifically is that he dies in the first 10 minutes of X Men First Class because. Oh, yeah. Wait, no, Last Stand, yeah. not First Class. Yeah, Last Stand. Uh, mm-hmm. Because he went into Superman Returns. And mm-hmm. no one. Remember Superman Returns really in that movie, but everyone remembers the fact that they were so fucking mad that he was killed off screen. Well, because he went with the yeah. director. Yeah, and and that was like I remember seeing that movie specifically and being really fucking upset that that happened. And for about a half an hour, I was like, "He's there's no way he's dead. It's I not was upset right. a lot of things he was off, off, off screen, and they fucking did." Um, no. You know what movie he's in that we were talking about before? <laughs> what? Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Oh God. God, but, well, that I think that was my that was part of my joke is that he is <laughs> yeah. in Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Look at the, <laughs> look at the thing as bad as the choices he's made. He's a good what I I think he's a good character actor because he's like no, every time he shows up in that support. I think role, that's my point is that he is a good character actor and he he's actually better. he's actually good casting for Cyclops. They just don't use Cyclops. Well. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, He's kind of a, a douchey uh, white dude. Like, he's, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it kind of works. Marston is like, Kyle. he's a better, uh, oh my God, what is the douche that was in uh, Baywatch and those singing high school movies? Zach Efron. Oh, Zach Efron. Zac Efron. He's a better Zach Efron. I actually like I mean, Zach Efron now, though. I, I might, yeah, we might go 20 it. rounds over that, but yeah, uh, uh, he's, um, he's pretty in good. Fact, if, in fact, if, you, if someone said they're going to reboot X Men and cast Zach Efron as Cyclops, I'd be all for it. Yeah, um, I'd be I, think it, I think yeah. Zach Efron at this point has earned it because he's just, not a Disney guy yeah. anymore. I mean, he's Ted Bundy for God's sake. Yeah, just like I'd behind, I'd be behind <laughs> Robert Pattinson as young Batman. Suck it, people. Well, um, he wouldn't be that young. Robert Pattinson's like thirty-seven. Yeah, younger Batman. Um, 
So up next, I'm just going down IMDb with the exception of one for okay. obvious last. Uh, we have Halle Berry as Aurora Monroe, a.k.a. Oh, Storm. Um, God, this, I'm this, sorry. This, this, fucking woman, this fucking woman was like one of the most talked about actresses at the time. She's the first black actress to win an Oscar, I believe. Which was way after this. And what was her follow up to that movie? Mm-hmm. Uh, Sword <coughs> that woman. What? Who said that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Swordfish is really bad. Um, and then, oh, I forgot yeah, about movie. Swordfish. Damn and it. then, the, yeah, sword, people remember Swordfish because they saw Halle Berry's tits. Um, like right. Movie? It's I'll a die another day. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Another day. Yeah. She, she oh, just that was was after, after cashing out. Well, I mean, she came back for Days of Futures Past. And actually, like, because she's in it so infrequently, she, she kind of, it works just fine for me. Because one, like, it maintains the, the, uh, the right damn haircut, too. Yeah, it, well, yeah, exactly. And it maintained the internal consistency of the movies. Like everyone came back who needed to come back. Um, mm-hmm. except, oh, so she has, except you saw the theatrical version, Anna Paquin didn't get to come back. Yeah, I, I haven't it's, seen the road cut yet. Is it good? The road cut's really good, actually. Um, the road cut yeah. has. Here's the thing with the road cut. And this is a spoiler for the road cut. It was never seen it. Um, Spoilers. John, John, do you mind a quick spoiler? I don't give a shit. It drastically changes how the rest of the movie goes, plays out after. Uh, 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 Kitty Pride gets accidentally stabbed. Like, okay, yeah, that entire like everything after that is way different because uh, someone mm-hmm. who doesn't die to the end of the film dies shortly after that in the road cut. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's a, dr- a drastic change of pace in how the movie plays out from the future perspective, not the past. Um, so I think she's good in this. I don't really have a problem with Halle Berry as Storm. Oh, I think she's I, good. I think the, I think the accent is bad though. It's it's uh, a very yeah, bad accent. choice. She drops the accent by the second and third movie, doesn't she? Yes, she does, she's and she's much good. better in those movies. Yeah, yeah she was. Um, but I but like if if I'm especially at this time. If I'm looking for people, because like all these people at the time, with the exception of like Famke Jansen, um, are I would argue are pretty much A-listers. She um, was mm-hmm. just a Bond girl though, so that's yeah. kind of where she. That's, that's a little after this. Sorry, I'm yeah. gonna. Like, I know we're I it was before this. this. Sorry to interrupt. No, the, no. Uh, wait, wait, John. John, what's what? John, what are you trying to say? I said I know we're going through the cast really quick. I just want to go back because I'm looking to see who was considered for Magneto, and Christopher Lee and Terrence Stamp were considered for Magneto. Whoa! I mean, those are both yeah. those are both good choices. I, mean, I Christopher, Lee. Christopher, Lee. Christopher Lee. I was really into Terrence Stamp as Magneto. Yeah. I mean, Christopher Lee. I think Christopher Lee is too arch, though. Um, and, and like, Christopher Lee is. Too... I think also Christopher Lee, even then, was too fucking old. Um, he was too mm-hmm. old. He'd also be too big, like. He's a big dude. Christopher Lee is oh, um, and Golden Eye was five years before this. Yeah, I'm like okay. just looking at all the cast. Yeah. they're both going through the rest of the people. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Or so Halle Berry is Storm. I if I'm an agent at the time, like if there's someone like yeah, we have to pick. We had we, we need a black actress to play Storm. Of course, you'd go with Halle Berry. Um. Or like right. your other option is like Vivica A. Fox. Uh, <laughs> or or I think people would actually maybe even say Vanessa Williams. No, they, I can't. Remember. Angela Bassett. I heard she was Angela the Bassett. Choice. Yeah, that was oh, the choice. shit. That's a good choice, actually. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I, I think like that's that come like not full circle, but like now she's she's Black Panther's mom. Yeah, and <laughs> Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey were considered for Storm. <laughs> no, Mariah. Okay, yeah, we dodged a bullet there. <laughs> uh, I would say all, right. all the bad parts of Storm are the writing. Her dialogue is atrocious. Yeah, and her way. dialogue is real bad. The wig yeah, is yeah. so bad, but you remember it's so apparent. <laughs> but it's in in like, but you definitely remember like, oh, how the very was storm. You'll never forget that that fact. Um, you also never forget the fucking the the toad line. Um, oh god, good or bad, it's, it's with so you bad forever. though. Yeah, um, I'll go for James Marston. Going back, I'm sorry, really quickly. Jim Caviezel was originally cast. Whoa, that's even weird. That's that's kind of the same thing. Also, you I know, feel like that would have been a waste of Caviezel because <laughs> he's like he's like a weird, intense dude. Like, yeah, like I don't it's like that's a lot like casting Joaquin Phoenix as Doctor Strange. Like, I get why people wanted that. But it's I, I like, I'm sorry, Arlen. What did you say that name was? 
you say Jim Caviezel? Did you say no. Joaquin Phoenix? You said Joaquin Phoenix. I think I heard a Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix? I don't know how to say it's his name. Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> He's like, that's like casting Giacomo Phonic. Joaquin Phoenix? Joaquin Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, Anna Paquin as Rogue. Uh, does yeah. Rogue have a name? I don't fucking know her name. Uh, her name. Marie. <laughs> yeah. I actually think she's yeah, Marie. Kind of perfect casting. Yes, because um, it kind of it kind of works. Yeah. I don't think Anna Paquin had blown up yet at this point. Um, she, no, she had already done. What are you talking about? She had won an Oscar. She go through the really yeah, yeah. She, had, she oh, won an Oscar as a child. Oh, That's wait, why she was. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's work on one or two people at a time. Um, uh, was she, wait, hold on. She was in Fly Away Home, wasn't she? Uh, yes, yeah, so and she was in The Piano, for which she won an Oscar. I was, okay, at that point, I was way too young to give a shit, and I haven't looked back on her career in a long time, so forgive me for so, that. So, uh, I have no for Rogue, if you guys want me to go through that, up to you. Uh, who, who almost played Rogue? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Drew Barrymore. Oh. <laughs> that... <laughs> That's, Sarah that's, Michelle Geller, Jennifer Love Hewitt. No. Oh, these oh. are all the eight girls of the two thousand. Katie Holmes. Okay, uh, I mean Christina, these all make Christina sense. Christina all of these. Yeah, oh, these are all yeah. The yeah. Girls, the okay, Richie okay. could have pulled this off. Yeah, yeah. Richie, Richie could have killed it. Well, yeah. The thing is, like, Rogue is supposed to be Southern, so like that's why Anna Paquin's perfect. And Which, then, yeah, Natalie Portman turned it down. That's Good for her. Dude. Dude. Oh, sure. and I, being kicked out of Marvel movies. Right, can I just go for Connor's sake? Uh, before this movie, uh, Anna Paquin did The Piano, Fly Away Home, Amistad, and then yeah. she <laughs> was in Amistad. I just watched that movie recently. Amistad? Yes. What She's Queen of the So uh, I'm going to move on to the next one because this is the one I have some trivia on. She did the Almost next- Famous after this. Oh, that's right. She did. Um, the next one is Tyler Maine, who played Sabretooth. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right. This is the true freak show entry because Tyler Maine has retroactively become known for different things outside of this because... Has he? Yes, because he was... <laughs> Here's the thing. People actually... The more I talk to people, they know him from Halloween. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, they know him as, yeah, yeah, because they know him as the new Michael Myers, who was yeah, in uh, right. Halloween too. He was mm-hmm. in uh, Troy as Ajax. Oh yes, he's the guy that gets his fucking That's shit right. destroyed. Now he was also he was also he had a pro wrestling career for New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I believe he had a short stint in WCW under the name Big Sky, and he teamed with a guy named Vinny Vegas. He was also mm. in an uncredited role in. He was also in Joe Dirt and an uncredited role in the Scorpion King. Yes, and so basically, his tag team partner left WCW, and yeah. wrestling promoters don't know what to do with people when their tag team partner either gets injured or leaves. So he just kind of got left in limbo. Um, and uh, I think his career basically <laughs> his wrestling career ended in 1996, like only a few short years after it started, and then he transitioned to Hollywood. He's he has very much in common with someone else who was in Troy. Also a big dude named Nathan Jones, who had a very brief stint in the WWE, but turns out that industry was not for him. And now he's also transitioned to acting. And he has done stuff like Troy. He's done like every Jet Li movie. Not every Jet Li movie. He's been, I think, in a handful of um, Tony Jaw films. He was in Jet Li's Fearless. Wait, wait, um, is he the guy in Protector that's like the main big guy? He is the huge fucking bald dude at the end that Tony oh, okay. He's Ooh, the that one's been on for ages. He's the leader um, of the team that throws the baby elephant through a window? Yes. He and Nathan, real quick, Nathan Jones is interesting because he's a real life convict who served time in Australia and he became known as, I can't remember the, the prison he was in, but he was known as the Colossus of that prison because he had a reputation for simply removing the, the door off his cell and going to get himself food in the kitchen. Wow. He is, he is mm. fucking huge. Um, so he's and, kind of like Danny Trejo of Australia? Um, I would say Dan Trejo is far more popular, but since, you know, it's Australia, yeah, sure, give it to him. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tyler Maine has kind of become, like, this, this, like, we need someone tall, so we'll use either Tyler Maine or Derek Mears. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. he was also in The Scorpion King. He was in, uh, The Devil's Rejects. He was in, yeah. let's see, uh, that's a, that's kind of about it, where, like, recognizable roles seem to kind of fall off for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but he yeah. is 
Uh, he's 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 got good presence. However, his saber tooth looks like a fucking a wear dog. Oh, it's so bad. His eyebrow did it better years later. Yeah, I'm just he doesn't, saying. And he doesn't fucking speak. And like, it's a character who's supposed to have this long history at Wolverine. He says he has like three mm-hmm. lines, and then he's basically Chewbacca. Yeah, but and then like, like he the first person he comes across, I think, is Wolverine as far as like an action piece goes. And they don't interact right. after of throwing punches. He throws mm-hmm. a tree at him. So I think their like, entire that, relationship is that. Yeah. Yeah. And I um, think that is like the movie's first huge fucking blunder as far as adapting this source material goes, because those two should have had it out for each other and they just don't speak. And that isn't fixed mm-hmm. until later on when this character is <clears throat> retconned into Liev Schreiber, who then somehow loses the ability to talk years later. Yeah. So I, I think that this this leads into sort of my biggest problem with this movie. And it sort of it occurred to me now what it is. So when I watched this movie, uh, and I, Hunter, I know it's the same for you, and maybe even John, uh, we watched this as the X Men cartoon was still airing. It was yep. like, and it was everywhere. Yep. So, and we oh, went yeah, in we're... with the knowledge of the X Men cartoon in our DNA, so we didn't need any of this context. So we watched so this movie. Believe it or not, and we were the fine with it. Can't yeah, live exactly. with me in life. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt really quickly. Um, the cartoon, right? Game yeah, for me, and then, but really, for me, it was the arcade games and a couple of comics in my library. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I figured you were similar. You were more similar in age to me than Connor or Lou. At least I, yeah, and like I, I, sure. I, I, um, I don't know how many because I, I have distinct memories of two to three X Men cartoons. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, right. I think this is closer to X Men Evolution. Yeah, time. that came out right, but the it doesn't matter because that that. That other cartoon, the one that was, it was same in universes, yeah, and the, the Fox Man. Man. Yeah, it was in Yeah, yeah that one ran forever. Yeah, it was in they... for years on Fox Kids and WB and shit like that. Um, yeah, so like we had this context for these characters, so it didn't matter that Sabretooth and Wolverine have no screen time. It does matter now that I'm an adult watching this movie and being like, yeah. What the fuck? Like, like where's where's the interaction? It, it is kind of like character. how it's very similar to how when people, when us and everyone else saw Batman and Superman, and Superman and Diana are in the same screen together, and you're like, they aren't even looking at each other. What are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? They have no reason to well, even like talk well, to about, each other at yeah. any point. To go to like plot points, what, they give no reason why Sabretooth takes his dog collar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. There's, there's no reason. It's, it's fan that. service for something that they don't even address. And I think at some point, mm-hmm. doesn't that show reference that like with a throwaway line? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Which well, I guess in this timeline, like they kind of, I feel like they kind of hint that the two, like Magneto and Xavier, know who Logan is. Yeah. Ish. Kind of. It's it's really hard to tell. Like. There, there are moments where I'm not sure if it was written this way or if it was just something that they came up with. Like, mm. I w- I'm not sure if when they started this movie that Magneto and Eric knew each other <laughs> ever. <laughs> like, it happened. Yeah. Um, uh, so let's move on to the next one real quick. Um, uh, I'll, I'm going to move the order uh, for the next three. Uh, Rebecca Remain as Mystique. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think this is fine. Um, she doesn't. Yeah, she's good. The character design is just so terrible. I'm not a fan of it because it's too. It's. I don't like, get it. Why? I, use, I, use I don't see why. Part. Why does she need to be naked? I don't understand. Okay. I, yeah. I know. The words, you took the words right in my mouth because I was gonna say the design is literally too fucking naked. Like, yeah, but right. she's never been that like, way. She's always wearing that same like white gown thing. Yeah, and the thing is, if you can right. also morph into having clothes. Then why not just wear clothes? Like, uh, also, like there's this, it, there's this weird thing of like, how perverted were we in the two thousands that we were also, like, we want to see Rebecca Romain's tits, but also but we want to put like, scales on it. The idea that she can uh, metamorphose, like metamorphize and turn into something that is clothed is nonsensical well, because I could hire a different object that has a different texture. Well, I was gonna say like, mm-hmm. can we talk about her power set in this movie, like? So she can change, but right. she can also like climb up things with just her hands. It seems like they and wanted just that. It's like they wanted Nightcrawler, but didn't want to give yeah. him teleportation and power. Right? Well, how come she can turn right. into an inanimate object? Like I, I get this exactly. Statue of Liberty. She turns but... into a statue at one point, and I don't understand how that. Also, like That's... when she turns into Wolverine, why do her claws mm-hmm. somehow work sometimes? Yeah, I don't. Why does she feel pain? Yeah. Well, it is part of her getting cut off. 
I can get that, mm-hmm. but like, why are her claws also kind of sharp? Mm-hmm. Like, she's well, still just like there were. There's, there's. Yeah. I think there's always been logistical fallacies in her, her paraset throughout the movies altogether because yeah. if they keep this, sure. threat, like, she can just change into whatever the fuck like at a moment's notice. Um, well, like I said, it, even including people who are fully clothed, who are wearing, who are wearing right. hats. Although you, I gotta be uh, honest. But, uh, this right. is unrelated. That that kick she does where she goes from Wolverine to Mystique, it's dumb, but it's cool. Oh, yeah. It is cool. I also it's don't cool, get... Yeah, but it, like, it's, uh, this is going to yeah. sound weird, cause it, but it has to do with the whole movie. Like, What is with her hair? Like, I don't get the slick back look. Like, everyone's hair in this goddamn movie. Everyone's like on fire. Everybody's hair is so really, bad in this movie. Everyone's I think hair that's is, like a 2000s thing, yeah. Yeah, everyone's um, hair is aggressively gelled. Yeah, it's it's a two thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's it's exactly. a gr- it's like it's aggressively the moment that this movie was made. Um, yeah, in every single way. I'm gonna move on to the next one because I don't think there's too much more to say about Mystique. I do, do want to say though, I, yeah, I think the whole thing with Mystique is she was supposed to be like kind of like a reptile. Is it, is uh, sure, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's still like she's just naked. That's all it is. Yeah. I don't know why she needs to be naked. I don't get it. The thing is like. like I watching this movie, I was like, all right, I'm waiting for the male gay scene, which I like. I guess there's like one or two that are kind of like that, but there's equal amounts of scenes of like Hugh Jackman without a shirt on. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, the next one is Ray Park as Toad, mm-hmm. and there's like with almost, a double, yeah, what double D or Darth Maul. Yeah, I was, no, I was gonna say he has a double sided lightsaber and all that, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, um, Poor, yeah. poor Ray Park is just known as the guy who who has a lightsaber. Like I, right. I think people know him as Toad from this movie just because of the fucking Halle Berry line. He's oh, also the snake. Oh. He's a perfect snake, guys. That's just me. I thought he was pretty good in the oh, GI well, Joe. Well, okay. I mean, that's fine, but you don't see his face. <laughs> How did he talk? He is the best parts of those piece of shit movies. Okay, like without he a is. And then, I, like the other best part is Byung Hung Lee as Storm Shadow. And if those movies were just mm-hmm. about those two, I'd fucking love them. But they're not. They didn't do it. They'd, be, they'd be good films. They'd be they'd be excellent. Yeah. And I, I actually say that the second movie that has that cliff top, that cliffside sequence with uh, what is uh, yes, with, <laughs> with yeah, it's Snake with the Reza as a blind master. Well, no, no, no um, not that part. Not that part. The uh, no, the it's part. Electra and Snake Eyes, and, and I we're don't... fighting on a cliffside. Uh, on, like against like rope hanging ninjas, it's an awesome. Mm-hmm. And then he goes into a corridor and fights Storm Shadow in this like really bitching sword fight. That whole stretch of that movie yeah, is fantastic. I, think, I, I, I hope he does Snake Eyes in the uh, spinoff movie they're making. Like I hope Ray Park comes I mean, back. I mean, like, he, I'm would, looking at his IMDb and he's not listening on that. I do have to say he did reprise his role as Darth Maul, and anytime they use the voice, so in all yeah. the cartoons, yeah. including the comeback of Clone Wars that's happening. Um, including when he takes a step up against Obi Wan, and Obi Wan's like, "Guess what? Oh, you're dead." Um, mm-hmm. Someone actually did a, 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 a they put a still shot of that. It was, it was a frame of that shot where it's Obi Wan standing across from Darth Maul, and someone said, "Like, look, Obi Wan is standing on an inch higher sand. <laughs> he had the high ground again." Um, so, last but certainly not least, uh, the one who uh, easily blew up the most in these movies was Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Oh, yeah. I think we're actually skipping. And I mean that. I mean that in both career and body. I think we're actually skipping the like, um, what's his name, Bruce Davidson as Senator Kelly. I'll get to yeah. Him. I was going with the, was going with there the were so many yeah. people in the, okay. in the wars for Wolverine. Like yeah. my God, um, like Edward Norton. Oh <sighs> no, Vigo Mortensen, John Claude Van Damme. I, Vigo would have been okay, but I still. I, I think, I, I think the funny thing about all these things is even Hugh Jackman, like he has made the role work uh, despite everything mm-hmm. because basically he's like one of the last people I would cast. No, he's uh, way too tall. Right. He's too like tall. Six two. Yeah, yeah. Wolverine um, should be like five, even. Yeah, he's a short, compact, like murder machine. Yeah. Um, but Hugh, I think Hugh Jackman, one in this movie, he is tiny. He's a little man. Um, he's yeah. a little man with very bad hair. Um, Arlen, your skipping thing is happening again. Oh, great. great. Yeah. There it is. Is it still, is it still happening? Yep, it's happening. You're, you're caught in the time stream. Oh, no. Lou, stop the recording real quick. Okay. One. 
All right. Hey, everybody. We're back. We had a little technical error with uh, something that was going on with Arlen's connection and his microphone. Um, so we were in the midst of talking about Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Um, and we were saying yeah. that his physical stature is not at all conducive with his comic book appearance. No. Yeah. And also, it, really it it'd be like <laughs> stout and like a little on the bulgier side. Like Hugh Jackman in this movie is skinny. He's he tiny. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I think I think later on, uh, Hugh Jackman made this work because he became this like by the, time, by the time the Wolverine rolls around, he's barely human looking. Mm-hmm. Like he is. There's not an ounce of useless oh. tissue on him. Everything is fucking shredded. Well, you can do that yeah. with lots yeah. of steroids and TRT and um, right. Well, I, also heard, I also heard his diet was fucking ludicrous. Um, it's probably just like right. chicken. And um and well, I also I mean, heard that the, the to get that look, um, I think it was like the day of shooting, the day before, he would dehydrate himself so that all mm-hmm. of his basically like all of his muscles were basically all of his skin was sucked in on his muscles. Yeah, he's oh. super vascular. Yeah. yeah. Well, they um, all they all do that actually. Yeah. That's the um, thing that... Yeah. But um, and by by the Wolverine, like I feel like his um, the fighting style as Wolverine is like perfect. Because he's got his own mm-hmm. stance, like he's got a, it, Hugh Jackman took this and really made it his own thing, um, mm-hmm. and like that hasn't really bled into the comics. Like other, like like Harley Quinn becoming a thing in the cartoon and then becoming a thing in the comics did not happen here. Like right. Hugh Jackman I think did not transition into the comics again. He's such a far different character than that character. Yeah. Also, Wolverine was like super well, established. Like, well, why didn't? Yeah, like why didn't Toby Maguire change Spider Man? Like, yeah, the character was kind of already set in stone. Whereas, yeah, like, exactly, I think that every version of Cap that comes after Chris Evans is going to be in some way impacted by Chris Evans' performance. Oh, I'll be, I'll be very curious to see when and if Marvel does X Men for the MCU and who will play Wolverine. I mean, I'm kind um, of like, if if Tom Hardy wasn't Venom. And if his American accent wasn't fucking atrocious, um, yeah, what? I would I would say Tom Hardy. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll say this. I don't know how long it's going to last. Oh, one at a time. I'm what still on the... Yeah. What was that, Hunter? With, with Amy Pascal gone, let's see how long that even lasts. Wait, well, first of all, yeah. wait, 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 Amy Pascal's gone, you say? Yeah, she's oh, out yeah. at Sony. She left what Sony. Did, yeah. Holy fuck, when did this happen? She got stabbed. Yeah, like a couple days ago, yeah. I she's still going to not... be working on stuff that she was already a part of, so she'll still have some <laughs> impact on Spider-Man. She, the thing is, but... she went from Sony. Yeah, I was going to say, she went from Sony to Spider-Man to Universal, who has Hulk right. and Namor. So, so I, like I she's was... taking over for the skeleton in the room. Um, yeah. That's what. Yeah. She's wow, doing. I I miss uh, this news entirely. But anyway, uh, we'll get to that a different day. Um, so I mean, I don't know who you cast now as the MCU Wolverine. I, I feel like they would I mean, go. They would no know, name. like let, yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, they would do. What they always do. Yeah. Grab someone without yet. Um, I or mean, they get someone who I needs. Still, or, or, like, or they get a Rob, they get a Rob engineer who's someone who is established and needs a yeah a career reinvigoration. What about like Re- a Charlie Hunnam? Oh dear God, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, th- oh. I still think I, I'm still on the train. Hold on, hold on, and mean, just do. Do you mean like a Charlie Hunnam, or do you mean Charlie Hunnam? <laughs> I mean Charlie Hunnam. No, I meant like like yeah. Charlie Hunnam. <laughs> no, please no. Yeah, um, no. I don't want Charlie Hunnam. No thanks. I like yeah, him. Yeah, Charlie no thanks. Hunnam. Um, um a horrible I idea. Um, I I'm still on the train of that they'll do Laura before they ever recast Wolverine. Like I think I it's much smarter. They're I mean, like you know who had, Laura is and they now. Have Daphne Keen come back. I think, it doesn't even need to be Daphne Keen. Everybody knows who that character is. Yeah, they I say X twenty three, and she has the two claws. People will get it. They'll put it together. That that's yeah. that character. And then you can actually you can spend a few movies building up the mystery of of Wolverine, and then you finally reveal it. Exactly. I think um, you will see or, uh, we'll still see a Wolverine before you see the X Men. That's for sure. Oh, one hundred ten percent. What if in the Falcon Winter Soldier thing you tease Winter Soldier having met somebody that worked for the Canadian services in his time with Russia? That'd be fucking cool. I'd be yeah. fucking into that. Um, so uh, when I move, start to move on a little bit, like I don't think, like I think Hugh Jackman has carried this fucking franchise on his back uh, for yes. almost twenty years. He I is mean, the franchise, and it is yeah. Him. Like his yeah, entire career yeah, is built on this, and it I'm does glad, play on I'm him. Glad. And that's kind of my problem with this yeah, movie, yeah, actually. Um, 
So, uh, and like he is like he has now the distinction of being the person to play a single comic book character the longest. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think, think he shares that with Patrick Stewart. Yeah, I think those well because like I, I suppose mm-hmm. you count like canonical appearances in the MCU. Like you could probably get more appearances, but time ta- but time not being recasted is completely untouched by those two. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. right. Um, yeah. And even I mean, to agree, I would say Ian McKellen and Halle Berry because like the two of them right. made it. They, they made it Days of Future's Past. Um, I mean, if Wesley Snipes comes into the MCU, he's gonna take that record. Man, so, that would be I fucking mean. nutty. But anyway, all right. So let's move on from the cast, and I want to talk about kind of the the overall aesthetics of this movie. And yes, of course, we're gonna talk about the costumes first. Oh boy. Oh, Lordy, 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 okay, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. And I'll say that. They did try to give everybody their own color. Kind of. Yeah, sure. Although, and then, and then, <laughs> like, hold it. They gave everybody accents so you could kind of tell them apart a little bit in like, on like a sunny, bright day. But guess where the end of this movie takes place? At Not night, on a sunny because, bright day. Because CGI oh, just, only works at night in some movies. My, before we um, jump into their suits, my favorite costume is actually the initial Wolverine costume, where it's the jeans, it's really the denim jacket, and then the leather jacket on top. I was like, ooh, he's wearing a Canadian tuxedo with an awesome leather jacket on top. It, yeah, it feels it. super accurate. Like that yeah. Yeah. has uh, been in multiple video games and other cartoons. But um, if you look at these pictures, the, these these costumes in a brightly lit room, yeah, they're not that bad looking. So I'm looking at one right now. It's an ensemble picture. And Hugh Jackman's the one closer to the camera. You can certainly make it out like the golden X on his chest. Like it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. it's, well, this is just know, like that. This is that Matrix, post Matrix kind of thing that was happening. Yeah. And this is also the right. effect of, uh, we've talked about her before. I believe this was all Bonnie Hammer, wasn't it? No, Lauren Schuler Donner, I think is her name. Oh, I can't that's remember. right. You were telling me that. Yes. Her, 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 her entire thing was, I don't believe that these characters would go out fighting crime wearing bright yellow costumes uh, because that's oh, not practical. And here's the thing. To, that, to the end of Wolverine's costume from, to, from the comic, I 110% agree. Because mm-hmm. that costume, that, his whole look... From his headpiece to his costume, if you try to translate that onto screen in live action, it would look fucking ludicrous. Well, do you, right. do you remember what uh, Chris Claremont joked about this decision? Um, no. What did he say? He said, you can do that on a drawing, but when you put it on people, it's disturbing. Yes. I mean, you, you say, say that, that, but that, we've but... seen Cap, and we've seen Thor, and we've right. seen... But those, also... those, but those outfits are somewhat subdued or altered to look mm-hmm. like... I mean, I'm going ahead. You Spider-Man... Kind of... But Spider Man's I mean, so yeah. like Spider Man's so simple. Like it, Spider Man's works right. just because it, it's that design is universal. Mm-hmm. But if you take yeah. that outfit, that yellow outfit, and like he it's has got other the, outfits, uh, let's just talk about the yellow specific right now. Um, yeah, the yellow outfit, like the black slashed accents on the side, and like the blue trunks and the big ridiculous blue boots, and then his headpiece. To this day, I can't explain because I don't know You're how so they. So fucking stupid. I don't know how the headpiece actually <laughs> works. Like, is are those ears? Are those horns? No, those are. Uh, it's to it's protect like, his hair. That's what it's. No, there for. I actually it's don't true. even think it's that. I think it's like he. It's a cowl, but somehow he has like his mask just goes further out. Is it supposed to look like like pseudo samurai gear? Like, is that the inspiration there? That yeah. is the inspiration, yes. That's what they've okay. said. Yeah. I, I, I really do believe that it's there to protect his hair. Because in the cartoons, his hair 100% matches up with the I, shape of that. So, I yeah. love the yeah. yellow costume. Like, I think Me that, too. But I, think, I do too. Like, but I think it would, if this were an animated movie, there'd be no excuse as to why you wouldn't use it. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. The brown costume existed at this point. Yeah, and saying, actually like, the, it was... The brown and orange one was around. And it was actually the standard at this point. Like, that was Wolverine at this point for an entire generation of people. And the brown costume, it's far more subtle. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we get in the MCU at some point. Well, did you guys... Did you guys see that, um... Sorry, I didn't mean... Go ahead, no, go ahead, John. Did you guys see that, um, post-credits scene for the Wolverine where you kind of see the brown costume? Yeah, and that's, like, the closest thing you can do with it. Because that looks like... The helmet looks ceremonial. Um, and the whole yes, thing looked like the whole thing looked like a gift rather than something he would wear. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like that works so much better where it's like, this is how, like, it, it's like, this is how we see you. And but, so here's a mm-hmm. gift to represent that. Yeah. But they could like, okay. But that's also like not his initial costume. Like, cause he never has a costume until he joins the X-Men really. Yeah. So yeah. like they could have done their original, like blue and yellows that they end up doing in uh first class, which I think could have worked, which is what the joke is. When they make the joke in mm-hmm. it, yeah, uh, yellow spandex for her heart. Um, but uh, right. I, I, I don't know. Like I, I can see the argument for the yellow cut, co- like the yellow and black, uh, blue one not working. I agree with, but yeah, I can see the brown and yellow, the brown and orange one. Like I can kind like, of see it. Like yeah, I'm looking <laughs> at. It, I can understand it, but yeah, the yellow and blue, I do not see working. That would look now. Like yeah. yeah. Now, now everyone else, like I don't see a reason why Storm's outfit wasn't gray. Um, or silver, yeah, or like silver. A, I don't yeah. see a reason why Cyclops's wasn't blue, um, yeah. or well, and it doesn't like, even need to be bright blue. It can be dark. Yeah, it can yeah. be dark, dark blue, and dark red, and dark gray, and all these things. And they're rose, green, and yellow and, aesthetic wouldn't work to me. Yeah, I, yeah, that's well, her, I, I, I her, her with Rogue in this also, entire series. Her look is also '90s, and the fact that like she is like it's superhero spandex, and then like what is it like a jean vest, like a denim oh, vest? Mm-hmm. Well, like her worst costume choice, which I, I, it's the one scene I was like, wait, what is she wearing? So the when Rogue when Logan is having his nightmare, what is she wearing? She's oh, wearing like a gigantic hoodie, like nightgown that has weird slits in the back, so he can see the claws go through her. It was the right. weirdest costume I've ever seen. It makes no sense. It's so yeah. It's she's like a seventeen-year-old girl. Really Why sense. is she wearing a nightgown? I have no idea. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's a uh, it's, it's where did she get choice. it? Um. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Kind of in this like, movie. Oh, go ahead, Hunter. He kind of in, in this movie, Wolverine kind of looks like someone's stepdad. <laughs> yes, he does. He is well, really yeah. like, like he, he is Hugh Jackman himself is very physically unremarkable in this movie because he hadn't he hadn't started doing the crazy physique yet, and his hair is what the fuck is going oh. on? Well, they're trying to replicate the thing in the comics or in the cartoon actually with his hair. Yeah, right. the cartoon thing. Yes. Yeah, but I do think I guess my problem with the costumes is like everything is so black and muddled that like pops of color on the costumes would have been so much nicer to see yeah um i, I agree think, i think his hair is fu- like they they get it later on by just mm-hmm. making it look like it grows in a weird way like he has the slick back look um but also like a pronounced kind of pompadour thing like this is you right. combed your hair into two triangles in the side of your head and then someone gave you fangs you, you guys are mentioning about the gelled back look before this is like okay the rest of the hair budget just put into hugh jackman <laughs> yes between yeah, that and-, and the horrible wig and toad's green hair and Oh, uh, yeah. the hair department is just so I, bad. I think X Men Two actually made his hair look worse. Um, and then I think it starts to get yeah. better with X Men Three, and then I think actually Origins is where he has one of the best looks because it's kind of it's flowy and doesn't look as forced. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. then they had, they, they found yeah. a way to like kind of streamline the two of those designs by the time uh, the Wolverine rolled around because then it actually looks like yeah. I'm like that looks like he did it himself and doesn't look stupid. Can the Wolverine and uh, Days of Future Past are probably all time for the hair, I would say. Yeah. The other thing I'll bring up, yeah, I would also argue well, the Wolverine kind of went a little too pointy for me, I think. Why do none of the villains have costumes except for Magneto? Uh, um, because money. Paper Tooth's <laughs> costume is basically rags. Um, and doesn't, yeah. he have a fucking, doesn't he have a fucking scarf? He has a scarf of like a rug from Ikea. Like, I don't he have, know what yeah, it's like he's, wearing, like, he's wearing, like he's wearing like animal pelts. Which is really funny because you know that's actually what they use in Game of Thrones. Wow. Um, Toad is wearing like Hot Topic gear. Um, oh, he's so right. 90s Hot Topic. It is yeah. hilarious. Um, and uh, that's... He, so it looks like Power Man 5000. Yeah, and Mystique is <laughs> Um, so yes. I, I think uh, now outside of them, I think actually this movie is kind of interesting inside the X Mansion, inside the uh, the lower levels where oh. Cerebro is was, and all that kind of stuff. As bad as the costume is, cool. the, the yeah. set design is the opposite. Yeah, yeah, that's the design. Really good. I think Magneto, is beautiful. Magneto, yeah, Magneto's cell is fucking awesome. Um, oh, it's perfect. It's, it's, yeah, it's so cool, and the way you have to get to is great. Um, His uh, layer is cool. Yeah, his layer is really cool. He's in some rock mountain thing, 
But like, and it's very clear that he made it. Yeah. Yeah. The and underground then, of the next mansion is just amazing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. that bright, sterile kind of metal gray. Oh, it's um, all like brushed steel. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Now, do do we is this? Do we think the soundtrack to this movie is memorable? <laughs> no. 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 I, I think John. O- I guess it's not John Ottman who actually composed this movie, but I think the score of this movie is memorable. The soundtrack of this movie is. Oh, bullshit. I would say like um, the score this movie is doing all it can to just not be the title mm-hmm. song from X-Men, the cartoon. Right. Just, I, well, the thing, there are these, yeah, there are these oh, little like think. references that come up. Um, and that score is good enough that like I missed it when it wasn't yeah. in first class. I don't understand but... why they just didn't use it. Why didn't they just use the theme from the cartoon? So here's a yeah. thing for you. I think the theme from X2 is better than the cartoon. That's my take. I really dig that theme. Wow. Mm. Here's the thing with the 90s cartoon. That is so angrily, frustratingly, aggressively, hilariously 90s. Like, it's it's a dude in a synthesizer. And I can right. tell you that because there was this group that came to my school. I don't remember if it's the same artist who did this song. I was in elementary school. They were called Sonic Boom, and it was two guys on synthesizer, and they did some kind of, like, fucking uh, performance for my, my school where they did this song, the Power Rangers song, and, like, every other major 90s action kids show of theme. Of course they did. Yeah, and, like, it's just, it's just, it's just two dudes hammering on a synthesizer. Right. It's it's awesome. awesome. Here's the thing, though. I think that that theme works much better than a lot of those. I think it's, it works better it, than the still, Spider-Man theme. Yeah, it's still fantastic. <laughs> well, I don't like Danny Elfman's Spider-Man work at all. Um, mm. Well, no, I'm, uh, talking about, I'm talking about Spider-Man. Oh, that, that yeah, yeah, that um, that one. That way, uh, you want your Spider Man, Spider yeah. Blood. Um, but uh, I think that, that the thing is, yeah. <laughs> I, I still remember that theme. Did it? Got it. Potatoes. <laughs> the thing with the nineties, it's it's very much a product of its time, and so if you, I think if you slap it on now, people are like, "Holy shit, that's really nineties." Um, I mean, like, it's, here's it's, the thing. It's kind of like in Justice League when Batman jumps down and it goes, I'm like, true. So work. <laughs> but here's the thing. But it, so if, if when they do their first X Men movie in the MCU, if they open up with Michael Giacchino doing a cover of that theme, yeah, like it, he did with it, the with the classic Spider Man theme, I'd freak say, the fuck like, out. <laughs> I would, I would, I would pay to see that happen because I think yeah. they just did it again for Far From Home because he's like, "Happy Avengers Day!" Here's what we're doing, and then you're da, 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 yeah. Da, da, I da, think da, actually da. when um when Sylvester did his version of the Homecoming theme, which is home, which is that version's version of the original theme, like that sound actually works a whole lot better. Like the the, the, the escalating strings. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that works. But if somebody did that later on with the original cartoon and they really souped it up, I think it would work. If you made it big and orchestral and and important sounding, yeah. yeah. But if you just translate like cool. a one to one, like from there to there, I think it would just come off as jarring. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we already talked about the tone of this movie as far as like the message they were trying to get across. But I think we can probably spend a few more minutes talking about it. Um. Yeah. This. Oh. I, I don't think this movie is too jokey. I think it actually takes itself seriously enough. Yeah. It, I, I think that, there's very little jokes in this yeah. one. It's not. It's I mean, like. Oh, go ahead. That's the thing I like about it, and that's that is where I will give Schuler Donner some credit. If they had been going for goofy and campy. I think the costumes would be uh, less forgivable, but because they are going for so serious and so like politically minded and real world minded, like Eric is very much like a terrorist. Like he's like a member of the IRA or something. Yeah. Um, and he's a, free, not, he's a freedom fighter in many ways. Yeah. So that, so I, I think the costumes in general are, helped by the fact that this movie takes itself so very very seriously and it tries to ground itself uh but also it uses the near future thing as a way of sort of getting out of that if they need to um, yeah whenever it's convenient we were going on before about the whole with the themes and everything and every scene that we were talking about with like ian mccown and patrick stewart those conflicting ideals those kind of mm-hmm. differing opinions those are like some of the best scenes in the movie because yep. you're just like they're they're fantastic because, like, yeah. the, every time uh, Magneto is connecting it to like I've lived that world before, I've heard these things before. After that intro, it's just like, yeah, he's not wrong. 
Yeah, you can't. It's, and mm-hmm. that's it's. We've always said a, a great villain is someone you can relate to, but not necessarily have to agree with. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of like, like, you know, like he's people. right. He's right. They're both right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's why yeah. I think Civil no, War works so well because you can't really look at either of those guys and go, eh, mm-hmm. just stop fighting. You're both right. Like, <laughs> which I think goes right. to Tyson, one of the cast we didn't talk about, which is uh, Bruce Davidson as Senator Kelly is amazing in that role. Like, yeah, he I think he's great. Right. Yeah, I also like, think that he has one of the most ghastly things happen to him in this movie as well. Oh because, my like, god, yeah, that was, that was what, brutal. What what exactly do they do to him again? They inject the X gene into him forcefully. Uh, well, Magneto no, has a machine that yeah. I don't understand how it works. Because okay, so how I was thinking about work? that. So I was so I was thinking about that. I was trying to figure out, like, wait, how does Magneto know how to build this machine? Why is this the thing that Magneto was able to do? And, and it, it do? occurred to me. Uh, so, well, no. So, so I, what I what I think it's doing is it's activating the X gene in people. Okay, but so it's, it's kind of like you what, don't. It's kind of like what Ajax did to yeah. Wade in Deadpool. Right. Yeah. But, but like, I think if you don't actually have the X gene, that's why you turn out like Senator Kelly. Yeah. Not everybody yeah. actually has that gene. Yeah. So it causes mutations in a body that can't sustain it. Yeah, um, like, but I was trying to figure out like how he built it, and it occurred to me, well, he helped. He helped uh, build Cerebro. Uh, X. Yeah, he helped X build Cerebro. So that's maybe how he was able to figure this out because it's but a like, similar idea. Is it? Um, is he, he's just making a gyro. Like, what is? Like, I don't understand what because they do nothing. Yeah, I always thought it wasn't. It's it was basically like cloud, isn't, it, isn't it? Just basically, it's a very sci-fi looking cloud burst weapon. Well, it's like a gyro that spins around him, and then it makes like a CGI light show, like blob mm-hmm. jellyfish like thing, like, like science center light shows where like you go oh, like. Yeah. Oh, but he's supposed to be basically sp- like he's going to spread whatever this is out to the. Yeah, the it kind of runs this out of the machine, yeah. but like yeah. just spinning things with like what it's is? A, it's a lot of silly mm-hmm. moving parts for a, for a, a function that can be very easily done. Yeah, yeah, I, but th- like, I think it, the problem is like he should have found a mutant who can make other people into mutants. Like, yeah, <laughs> that would actually make this make a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just that this machine amplifies your powers. Yeah, um, his plot is yeah. very contrived. Um, but it's also like it's it's I wouldn't say the first, but it's certainly one of the most high profile ones of like the resonator is going to shoot the thing in the sky and then the bad thing will happen. That's yeah, true. Well, I think it, this it does set, like... the, set the stage for that yeah. yeah it seems like they when they wrote the script they're like all right he needs rogue because he needs her to replicate his powers to work a machine mm-hmm. okay and they were like well what right. is the machine uh well he has magnet power so it's metal okay but then how right. does it make stuff uh it spins a lot yeah <laughs> i think that they just i think that once they got to like the how they were it's like we don't care people Honestly, like, I, yeah, they're like, I think if you can accept mutants, you can accept that this thing does this thing. So I think like, how, this, how does it work? It just whoosh. Yeah, it just works. Um, but I think this is a still is nowhere near as egregious as what he does in Days of Futures Past with the Sentinels, which I still don't understand. It's like, okay, you put metal yeah. in them, how are you making them actually function? Because at this point, you're yeah. just, just puppetry is what I'm thinking you're doing. They like, definitely do a exactly. lot of weirdness with his powers in this because all right, so he's they like all right he has magnetic powers but then he's able to do stuff with his own body that makes like no sense well the thing he does with it what is i'm sorry he let me remember this correctly he drains the iron from someone's blood that's the second one okay yeah, yeah like that's one. that's not how the iron in your blood no works. but they also <laughs> we're not walking around with actual metal in us. no but he like right. does some other stuff where he's like pulling himself around and it's like that's not how like they kind of make it where like he's somehow this giant magnet and that is not how his powers are supposed to work. Yeah, he his his abilities he can manipulate metallic objects or metal objects okay, that specific, metal properties. Lou, what specifically are you talking about? Because they do mention something that might answer your question. Um, like, yeah, I can't remember what specifically what scene it was, but I remember like they did something. Oh, I think it actually is like the first scene when he's getting pulled towards the gate. And then there's like three Nazis holding him down. I'm like, why are these people having such a problem holding down a child? Well, I always thought that was. Uh, I think that that's just. I think that's. I think that was him learning how to not control his powers. That's why. I but like, why well, is it? That, I think that's part people. of it. Like, and that's so, why I think uh, like, he feels like yeah. it's like he's able to move. Because, like, I understand if he's wearing clothes and the clothes are metal. Like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, that makes sense. But like, he's also like somehow doing stuff with I mean, himself. He's also able. 
he's also able to fly because of his magnetic power. Yeah, so like, he's I, wearing I metal know. boots. I, I can get that. Eh, I think that there are times where we see him flying, where like he, like he's he flies in X Men: Days of Future Past, and he's wearing prison clothes. Um, yeah, so see, like, like I'm willing to. I'm willing to accept that he's able to push himself away from metal as well as he's able to attract it to himself. Yeah, it's, like, it's, I, it's, it's like how Rogue flies in the comics is still ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it because I think even, right. even, even Stan Lee has said like when he's like when he's like I hate flight characters who have flight who have no method of propulsion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I'm able to accept that Dane Tihan can fly in uh fucking uh, oh Chronicle movie. Yeah. Yeah, Chronicle. Because, because he's pushing it, himself it is, away from is, the thing. Yeah, yeah. It, and what Magneto is doing is a form of telekinesis, I suppose. Um mm-hmm. so like yeah, maybe yeah. It, maybe the it's it's a subtle idea of pushing because I think in Chronicle it's basically it's learning how to it, it is it is pushing and pulling essentially, and it's 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 all right. It, physically base where it's like they have to have something to 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 base off of like i think because i think with flight yeah. it was like they had to practice it they didn't just get it right away yeah but there's like mm-hmm. a bunch of things it's like so when they have the scene where he fires the guns it's like all right he can pull the triggers i get that but then like he's able to stop the bullet it's like can he, he does say that he he says he couldn't stop them all to do it though yeah yeah which also is bothers it's me. hard basically it's yeah. also a scene that i'm like why doesn't that guy just move I mean, he's, he's just yeah. like yelling as the bullets like slowly going. It's like, dude, you can like scuttle back. There's a lot of logic problems that I I, I also yeah. noticed. I was like, wait, just just move, just like yeah. jump out of the way. Team <laughs> and Austin Power, which where it's like, of, no, stop! Yeah, of, yeah, which is funny. Stop! Of all the effects, yeah. that effect with the guns was the one that looked the worst to me. Because oh, I was like, oh, these are really all bad. on wires. These are just I, on well, fishing I, lines. I think, I think grading, especially the CGI in this movie, um, uh, CGI, practical effects, yeah, are one thing. I think all, most of them are good, but the CGI in this movie and mm-hmm. early CGI is dog shit. Uh, the thing? Some of it's really bad. bad. Some of it, I... Yeah, some of it I give a lot of credit for, like... I think the effect of Magneto's machine is actually it actually looks pretty yeah. good compared um, to other CG movies that I've seen. Like the effect of I the claws, Hellboy. the claws coming right. out of Wolverine looks and amazing. And how do the claws in this mm-hmm. movie look so much better than X Men Origins? They look so <laughs> good. Well, because, because they're X-Men actual Origins claws. Because X Men here didn't look like Who Framed Roger Rabbit claws. <laughs> <laughs> like those, Which, are, those are fake claws. That bathroom, yeah. yeah. So fucking funny because they're like they come out like these bat- massive fucking flippers out of his hands. Like, they are flat white. Like, there's no yeah. texture to them. And they also do a bunch of stuff yeah. with them where, like, oh, I love how they have them where you can control like which ones come out, which plays with the great yeah. like flipping off thing. But then when at towards the end when Magneto was like separating them, it's like, oh, that actually looks like it hurts. Every I will say, yeah, it looks painful. painful. Every time Magneto gets his hands on Wolverine, I cringe because I'm like, that's his bones. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, Wolverine like is most mostly indestructible and could just get up for most things. But like, that's the it's you're getting to the one thing that. Like it's it's his core basically. Like you're grabbing what's holding him together, and you're just wrenching it. That actually well, reminds also, me. The, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, also we know now that they're literally bone claws underneath, which yeah. makes it somehow worse. Like before, we thought like, oh, what's well, like if you have like knives just stuck well, in your arm? I think now already, it's like connected into his skeletal structure. I which think is bone just, claws ugh. existed in the comics already at this point. They did, but I yeah. didn't know this. At yeah, six yeah, years I, old, Lou. yeah, I, I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know either. Um, but um, I also I think, like the fact that in this movie, at some point, like Rogue asks him, "Hey, did that hurt?" And he says, "Yeah, every time." Oh yeah, well, that's one of the first things I was just gonna say. Like, I, I think one of the things they really missed out on, I wrote in my notes, is when he like because they do the seatbelt line and then he flies through the cars. Like, I feel like they should have actually made him more battle damaged because he he gets like two scratches and then that heals. I'm like. Man, I would have loved to see like his leg all turned around or his arm. Yeah. Like that would have mm-hmm. looked so much better to like kind of show like, oh, his healing factor is amazing. Yeah. 
I mean, which, they wouldn't have known at the time, but what if he barely just missed a stump that was coming out of the ground and it was all sharp? That would be a, yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, which yeah. also, oh, can I ask why? <laughs> why does he start like? Why do all his wounds open up when Rogue grabs him? I don't know. I, don't, I was I like, I was like, wait, he's healing wonder. factor. They're healed. He's healed. Well, I wonder right. if he's taking the healing factor part I don't, out of him. But like he's already healed. Yeah, but that yeah, that doesn't make <laughs> sense. Like he doesn't even have scars. Yeah. So like like it doesn't make any sense. Like it makes I, no I, sense. I even, like I could see it if his body just started breaking down. That would actually be it, it would have actually cool. if it would have been smarter again, because they already established it in this movie, if like he started to age. Right. That because they like, reference it. Slowly started to degrade. That would be if cool. His, like his yeah, if his hair started, started to turn gray. I think that's just mm-hmm. a result of people who were involved in this, like having enough of an understanding of the characters not to just disgrace them on screen, but not really getting right. it to the point where they could properly translate everything completely. Yeah. Because it started mm-hmm. to happen. I was like, oh, I forgot that this happened. Why is this happening? Yeah. I also wanna, is- I want to briefly mention uh, something that I heard on a podcast. or a, uh, It's a YouTube show. It's also they have a podcast. It's called Mr. Sunday Movies. It's two guys who host that show. And um, they, they gave me a, co- a term that I'm going to bring onto the show, which is called uh, Getting Professor X'd. Um, which, oh. <laughs> which, which is he's oh, like God. Well, and he's like and then Xavier got Professor X and it's basically he passes out he falls over he gets into a coma someone pushes his wheelchair over like it's every single appearance I think he gets he gets Professor yeah. X because <laughs> like, he's yeah, too powerful again. he would solve all the problems so this is so this should go on a list of things that when I was six they were fine. But now that I'm not six, they really bother that, the fuck out of me. Fucking, that fucking supercut of the X-Men cartoon of, of Xavier screaming in agony, um, mm-hmm. and getting knocked over and punched and thrown, made me laugh till my fate hurt. <laughs> what like, movie was this? It's, so it's, it's a supercut of the X-Men cartoon, but it's only clips of Xavier getting throttled. In like in either That's... psychic ways or physical ways, or he's having some kind of emotional reaction, and it's always him going, ah! Like... <laughs> That's like the war supercut, just perfect. Just yeah, peak internet. I'll, I'll, um, I'll send it to you after we're done. It's so fucking funny. I, I, I um, want to know, like, can we? What did you guys think about the making G- Jean Grey the love interest? Like that whole the love triangle, love triangle thing. Oh. Uh, like I know it's I know, a it was, thing. I was just like, I would say it's frustrating. I just don't thing. think it works. <laughs> no, yeah. Hey, Logan, it it doesn't go right. anywhere until the third movie where like Wolverine officially supplants Cyclops as like well because he's dead yeah he's dead <laughs> off <Right>. like, <laughs> even, even but even in from, Logan yeah. seems, Wolverine sees Cyclops dead he's like finally it looks like on the surface right. like okay like it's I know they're together <laughs> but like if I put those two in a room together like I'm sorry <laughs> she's leaving with Wolverine yeah well that's the, the first right. time that we see her is. Or the second time we see her is she's like literally. I was like, oh, she's really handsy on Logan when he's yeah, out cold. Yeah, I don't yeah, think she it, is. It, it, it makes it look flimsy to begin with. When like he shows up and she's immediately like, fuck yeah. Um, so it he's just like, makes, oh. yeah. it makes they it don't have like, any chemistry. Also, that, and it, makes, my head. it, like, it they have better Logan. chemistry than her and Scott. Yeah, well, it makes Logan look. Yeah, but they have like negative chemistry. Well, what's so. actually funny is I think I think him and him and Scott have the best chemistry. Yeah, um, they do. They have a lot of chemistry. How do I know it's you? You're a dick. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> Logan. Thing. Oh, oh they, Logan. Stay away from my girl. They set up like a buddy cop thing with him and Scott, and in all three movies, that never pays off. That's never a thing. It's never I, like just the two of them on an adventure. I would not watch them. a superhero buddy cop movie starring Wolverine and a Cyclops. Yeah, like, but like they don't. They share barely any screen time in the next two films. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, else, like the whole love triangle thing, it makes Logan look douchey. It makes Cyclops look like a puss. Um, and it makes you mm-hmm. look really unfaithful. So, like, it's just a. I think they just needed to, like, they they easily saw Hugh Jackman and Wolverine as like, oh no, this is going to be the guy. Yeah. And I think they were like, well, the guy needs the fucking girl. So and they would not do Storm, which is I, like, they just had no one for him, except right. for Gene. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It gets better, I think, by the time the Wolverine was around because where that. Oh yeah. Me. An emotional yeah, I think every character. Yeah, I think every character gets a redeeming 
thing, except for Roke, honestly. And this is sort of a larger point, is that I don't think she ever really gets a moment to shine in these movies as like a character on her own. Like she well, does a lot of cool, interesting stuff as an actor and as a character, but I don't think she really, she's always the she never really becomes an well, X-Men. She, yeah. She, her role in these movies is to scream at things. Yeah. She's the damsel. Right. Always. Yeah. Which um, is really I mean, weird for me coming from the cartoon where expanded. she was like a main where character. She, where she's a tank. Could, yeah. Where she could roll in and mm-hmm. knock the fuck out of a sentinel with her bare yeah. hands. Well, the thing is they can't, yeah they can't give her those things because that's not her real power set. Cause that's like all tied into the, right. car, which I think they even deal in the cartoon. Like she, cause they she did, in the, in the comment, in the, that, cartoon, that was my, in the cartoon, yeah. she steals her powers from Carol Danvers. No, that's where she gets them in yeah. the comic. Yeah. Oh, that's that, okay. That was my introduction yeah. to Captain Marvel. That's where I yeah. knew her from. from she the straight X-Men up. Cartoon. Yeah. She straight yeah. up drains I, Carol. So I like, saw that. I also found out. I never saw that episode. So I found out about in the same show, uh, Mr. Sunday Movies, where they also coined the term rogue, don't be touching. Um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Which, <laughs> God God damn it. Rogue, stop it. Don't be touching. If we talk about Rogue, then we could talk about kind of the ancillary mutants that we get to see in this, which the only mm-hmm. one that's that doesn't get recast is Iceman. Yeah. Everyone else gets recast. I did not even realize Pyro yeah. got recast. I forgot to mention him in the cast role because I forgot he's in this movie. But yeah, I mean, Bobby Drake in this movie and he's played by... Sean Ashmore. Sean Ashmore. Sean Ashmore. Sean Ashmore. I don't know what's happened to that guy in the years since then. Oh, he uh, did he, was in the movie he did that game. Oh, he did that game, too. With uh, Yeah, it's that, too. He was also uh, a star in several episodes of Smallville, along with his tw- his uh, brother. This is the show that we need to talk about. show. <laughs> Yeah, he played um, like a proto parasite, and then his brother took the role of Jimmy Olsen. Oh wow! Um, and he was also in the Animal Show. That's right. So, I'm oh my okay. god, he was. there was an Animal Show. All right, so let's move on to um, what time has done to this film, and I think we should just Ooh. address the elephant in the room right away, and let's get to Brian Singer. Um, oh, so yeah. for those who are living under a rock, actually, shock. Okay, here's the thing. Just from actually, work, not really. There are people who don't know what the fuck's going on with him i feel um, like most people like a vast majority i i was talking to people about uh bohemian rhapsody and i was like i don't know i don't really feel like watching it yet because that stuff about singer just came out and they're like what stuff i'm like oh no i have to like i don't want to be the one to tell you this mm-hmm. um but did bad things really really, uh, really brian bad singer in in a nutshell uh is basically a predator He's Kevin um, Spacey. Yeah. They're the same Kevin person. Spacey. They apparently they they have they're friends too. They're chums. Um uh yeah. he was uh grooming and preying on uh younger boys um in what clubs and stuff? Um clubs and they would have parties. parties also. Yeah. They would have parties that, that, like you, we're going on years. Well also app like, pupil he did some stuff with like yeah. he got sued uh, by the kid from uh was it app pupil that the kid yeah, wanted think, yeah, he wanted like a fifteen year old kid to do a nude scene. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, mm-hmm. after Google. And I guess later on, like, there was anecdotal evidence coming from the X-Men sets about, like, older actors basically playing interference with Brian Singer on set with the younger actors, yeah. which is the, yeah. makes my skin crawl. He was, he was doing casting couch stuff, he, but with younger men. <sighs> right. It was everything that Harvey Weinstein's done yeah. between him yeah. and Spacey, but with men. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like and it, underage it, men too, it, mostly. It's, it is taking far more. What's oh, happening? What the fuck? That's my, that's my air conditioner that just kicked on. Oh Jesus! <laughs> okay, uh, I used. To, oh, uh, um, it's it's taking far longer for. Uh, I would suppose like, and this is in in some cases not appropriate. But in this case, it is like the lynch mob to seemingly finish the job because. Weinstein got well. Weinstein. He's suing everybody. Spacey got Spacey, and yeah, Singer is going on the 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 hyper defensive on this. And I like, I know the, the narrative of this lately has become like, let's hear both sides. But similar to Bill Cosby, where like, if enough evidence yeah, really do. pops up, mm-hmm. yeah, like if enough evidence really pops up, like then we should start taking this more seriously and not begin to discredit the story. The rumors around Singer have been around for forever. Yeah, and that's right. the thing. That's that's what people said about Weinstein. Because if you go back and listen mm-hmm. to our interview with Uma Thurman and Courtney Love, they're both like, uh, yeah, don't go to a Harvey Weinstein uh, personal invite, you know, if he invites you to his like, right. department, hotel suite. Courtney, mm-hmm. Courtney Love says something to the effect of, I would never leave my daughter alone 
with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Um, that's, do you need anything else? Like this is a woman who there's footage of her doing heroin with her naked baby. Um, not giving the heroin to her naked baby, but still yeah. she's doing heroin in the same room. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like we, we've talked a lot about singer and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on him because mm-hmm. we said what we need to say, but his he name is my vision of this movie though. That's the yes. thing. Oh, That's yeah. The and here's the thing. thing. Like, I don't even think he his the art and artist thing comes up here because I don't even think first of all, I don't think he can direct action scenes to save his life. They're all too floaty or no, just, he can't. no, no. no. They're, they're not uh, good movies. Yeah. But no, like it, it, it seems like he is good at seemingly everything else. Um, he's, good at, he's good at setting a scene, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing um, is, like, the best scenes in this movie are between two amazing actors. So, how much is he actually yes. doing that? He, he, when I say he's good at stuff, it's like he, if you hire him, you're not going to worry about him doing a terrible job, I suppose. Right. <laughs> yeah. There, there are moments where I see why he got other jobs where I'm like, okay, that's not, that's bad. That's some skillful directing here and there, but there's nothing in it where I'm like, Oh, we're just there's nothing in here that's where I'm say it's worth it to ignore some of the bad things that were known at the time of this movie being made. Yeah. Like I don't I don't get continuing to work with him um for this movie and for somebody at this level of talent. Like The Usual Suspects is a good movie. It's not so good that you let this person continue working for another 25 years unchecked. Yeah. Um, the thing is, he I, made I, a lot of money with his first like four movies. Yeah, right. I think also because Fox realized that it hit in their hands, like you wouldn't dare get someone else for the sequel; you'd get the same guy. Yeah, fair. Which uh, is then, which is sure. the weirdness of I get when we we'll get to it is like when he left for Superman Returns. Yeah, after uh, X two. Yeah, and, and it's weird because it, I'm now thinking maybe I really like X Men two because I'm thinking about that I, movie. And, and it's impressive. I yeah, X two is definitely the best one. I fucking love X Men two. Um, X two is a good one. That, that's a really that good he movie. actually directs the fuck out of that scene where the the the, the assault team sieges the mansion and Wolverine tears them to shreds. Yeah, he uh, kills well, five hundred like, people. Uh, the Mystique scene where Stark was like, kill that thing. And then she just like tears everybody apart. Yeah. I was thinking of that during the Mystique scenes in this movie. Me like. That scene's so much better than oh, everything or, else. Was well, not just that. Think about the mm-hmm. Nightcrawler scene. Is Night that the opening? Mm-hmm. Right in the beginning. Um, and I think the way he filmed uh, the, the Phoenix uh, showing up at the end is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, I also forgot well, that. that's like a that's a real subtle thing, but yeah, way, like, that's, a, that's an effects team. The act plays out like from a direct from just a film standpoint. I think is awesome because like Wolverine, mm-hmm. fucking, he fucking chained Striker to the dam. Um, and yeah. they have, I'm, I don't want to get too much into it, but he says, like, you know, you'll always be an animal, blah, blah, blah. But uh, back to this movie. Right. But I think in, this, yeah. in, a, in a vacuum, without the context of the MCU, and without the context of even, like, the greater DC movies, like, I think this is still good. Yeah. Um, well, actually, getting to what you were just saying, I actually wrote in my notes, we don't see a kill to, like, the very, like, like almost the the third act, but, like, the very, and it's the very, towards the very end, and it's the guy on the boat, there's like two guys on the boat that get killed and we see a dead body and that's like the only death right. we see in and the yeah, whole Storm, movie. Storm kills Toad. And, very but um, like off screen. Like yeah, you don't actually see uh, Toad die. And Sabretooth, uh, and Sabretooth also seemingly dies by just being thrown off a high thing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> seemingly. Yeah. Get zapped out by Storm or whatever? Uh, no, maybe. Toad gets taken out by Storm. Storm, yeah. yeah um, Wolverine kind of punts saber tooth off of the statue of which reminds me i know i think most of us are fans of how this get made but have any of you listened to the batman and robin episode no yes i probably okay. did but it was like years ago because one of the guys yeah. I can't remember who it is do you know what i'm talking about arlen uh i think matt myra is the guest on that yes. i don't know how the fuck i know that that was matt myra but i know that it was yes. it was matt um, myra but he brings up a story that like somebody he knew that was working at marvel at the time was like, oh yeah, we're gonna, there's like the scene that they wrote that the Sabretooth and Wolverine are going to be snowboarding down a mountain claw fighting. Oh. <laughs> and that was the most <laughs> movie. God, no. It's, no like, I mean, it's like Marvel has their own John Peters. 
<laughs> I kind of want that though. I kind of want myself. that. Is it is it weird or is it a coincidence that in the Ninja Turtles movie later on there was a big giant like essentially snowboarding action sequence? That's a coincidence. Okay, I maybe uh, I kind of want to investigate it now that you bring yeah. it up. There, <laughs> like I. To follow the house, <laughs> any movie where there's like snowboarding or surfing or skate or uh, skateboarding, snowboarding or rollerblading is terrible. There's uh, no movies right. that have That's those true. things. That good. I, I, I give you a die another day, which opens with people <laughs> surfing into North Korea. Oh um, god, that's the Halle Berry right. one, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, um, they, uh, they, 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 they they make the villain a North Korean, but he's white. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, now, with the context yeah. of the MCU and with the context of even the yes. even the DCEU, like this, it, it kind of falls towards the bottom of comic book adaptation movies for me, especially because yeah. like the the genre has, and this also ties into what has Kevin Feige learned? Because uh, Kevin Feige yes. uh, this is his first movie, so I was gonna say he's kind mm-hmm. of been very. Yeah, it's important that we bring him his presence up here because this is kind of where he started to cut his teeth on like it's almost like he started mm-hmm. hiding the shadows going soon. Uh, <laughs> yes, th- this is the good. beginning of, oh, of him. This is yeah, this is his time in the background, just sitting back and watching and just like taking notes, like, hmm, like, I will it, use that later. I well in the past 19 years, but it's a good like template for where we would go in yeah. the year. And I love the idea yeah. of someone in Hollywood standing behind everyone who's kind of in the front lines and just taking mental notes, like, or at least maybe not mm-hmm. them, but going back later on and going like, what did I see on these sets and from these productions that I should do and should not do? Because he was there for yep. all of them. He was there. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Was, uh, I, 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 when I think about this He was movie, there for... Yeah, go, go ahead. I was going to say, when I think about this movie, I think about this, I think about the first Raimi Spider-Man, I think about Daredevil, what else right. was that? I'm a Ghost Rider, and... Yeah, Fantastic and he was involved Four. in all of them. <laughs> yeah, but when I look um, at those movies, I'm like, what on um, all the first ones of those, I'm like, where would I rank X-Men among those? I'm like, definitely below it's Spider-Man. Dead middle for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's like, like I, I think I don't know if Daredevil I, beats I, this. I think, honestly, I think X-Men is the hard middle ground between the stuff that we love and the stuff we're like, no fucking thanks. Yeah. 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 It's not yeah. quite like they don't I, I feel like it's fence right. sitting. It's a fence sitting movie. Because they yes. don't go right. for they, they don't go far enough and they don't go real enough. Because it's they, not mm-hmm. that was, it's it's and hard. they don't go crazy enough. They don't go they don't go Ang Lee Hulk in this movie. Yeah. Which is gonna be that's, that's gonna be a delightful movie. podcast when yeah. we get there. Oh, yeah. um, I haven't seen that movie in years. I kind of want to revisit it though. Uh, full disclosure: I've never seen it. Um, it is so Japanese in like a lot of the. It's things very that interesting. I've heard. Yeah. It's, very, it's I've heard it's very much like when you not to, not to the same extent, but like I was talking to someone and they actually compared it to Freddy vs. Jason. Um, they said this is what that, that's it's, what huh. yeah, it's it, very that, exist, uh, existential. When you take a Japanese yes. horror film director who makes like really over the top Japanese horror and you give him two American slasher icons, he turns them into elementals. Like <laughs> very much that. There is okay. a distinct yeah. lack, lack of doves that disappoint me. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, but um, okay. yeah, um, yeah, I think yeah. that, and uh, yeah, this is the hard line between uh, all the shit we love and all the shit we find it to be kind of mediocre. Uh, I, don't think, mm-hmm. I don't think Fox was like, "Oh, this will be a, a surefire hit." They were probably like, "Let's roll the dice on this and see how it goes." Yeah, what was the first? They were very unsure. Besides Blade, was Batman and Robin the one before this? Batman yeah. and Robin is the one that killed DC movies until Batman begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah there's like, a two year gap between Blade yeah. and this. So um, I would say, if we ignore Blade, like this is like, all right, Batman, Batman and Robin is way too campy, so we have to be serious. Oh yeah, but, it's. it's I'm glad right. Batman exists. One because it's entertaining as fuck, um, and two, it's because it kind of it it painted this big picture of like this is what it means to go too far. No, oh, it's the movie that mm-hmm. the franchises, yeah, simultaneously, yeah. and it's a movie that George Clooney okay, um, apologized for, and Joel Schumacher spent an entire commentary apologizing for. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay. Overall, going back to this, this is the definition of just okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess like what if we all had to like 
venture a guess. What did Kevin Feige learn? Um, I, my guess is I think he learned about casting from this movie. I think that's um, the major thing. He learned about casting, and what I think he saw as a don't was costume design. Costume design, yeah. I would say, stick closer to the source material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, because yeah. the thing is, I would say, not movie, go, like, keep a fine balance between, like, like the moral themes and like deeper like political themes mm-hmm. and comic book action. Yes, and and this is a, this sort of goes back to an earlier point that I made about Lauren Schuler Donner making making your story fit what you see on screen. Like it should all fit together. It should all work cohesively. The dark costumes fit with the story of this movie, and I think that that is something that the Marvel movies have done in their sort of next generation. Is they all fit what is going on on screen. There's a certain level of realism to um, I don't know fantasy in the MCU, and it and each movie kind of fits and fits even, its own pattern. Even, even Captain America's worst outfit in Avengers has a purpose and it's to, it's because yes. it is the one he did wear it's a, or a replica anyway and like it's it's because colson fawned over him so much it's like why wouldn't i wear this into battle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it looks like pajamas because that's what colson would want to wear he, yeah. he yeah but like again a like, suit that cap chose to wear in a fucking war zone like <laughs> even if you go to like iron man like you watch that movie now and i watched it recently it's just like it's not too unrealistic for the world we live in. Because I can't, I can't remember what I was listening to, and they actually said somebody from the government actually contacted them and was like, uh, you guys, have you been talking to people? And they're like, no, we just kind of guessed what the technology would be several years from now. And they're like, yeah, well, you're too close. Holy shit. That's yeah. awesome, yeah. actually. Yeah. I think it yeah. mostly has to do with, like, the Jericho rocket stuff. Like, Yeah, I think so, too. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was just yeah. Like, so I, I think we can... I think we, can put a, um, we can put a bow on this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to. I'm going to quote a couple things, just and we can sort of wrap on this. Uh, and this is a quote from Kevin Feige: uh, "Things come out for a reason. The very first film I worked on was X Men One. Uh, we went to go see a two hour and twenty minute version of that movie, and mm-hmm. I thought my career is over before it starts. <laughs> it's over. I didn't understand the process back then. And then uh, he goes on later to say, it always is." It always is that the movie is as long as the movie wants to be, and there will be some deleted scenes that we put out on home video on this one. So that's I, that's sort of a very definitive answer as to what he learned, um, which is that the movie is the movie, and that you kind of have to find it uh, in post production. So yeah, basically, what he's saying uh, is, you can't force it. It has to happen. Like it has the magic has to happen on its own. Yes, basically. You can't you can't say this is what the movie has to be and that's what it will be. Uh, I think that explains Iron Man lot. so much. You cannot create yeah. lightning in a bottle, you catch it. Yeah. And I oh, think yeah. that that's where his problems with uh, Avi and Ike, our two favorite people, uh, yeah. come from. Uh, yeah, working talking. with people who yeah. just want to force it. Yeah, mm. They want it now, yeah. but they don't want to work for it. Yeah, um, exactly. But, um, yeah, I think we just, we can definitely wrap on that note. That's actually a pretty excellent a quote I've never heard before. And I didn't know that the original cut of X Men was two hours and twenty minutes. Fuck me, that would be unbearable. Uh, I believe it though, uh, because do? there there are holes in this. <laughs> there are definite holes. So, yeah. Yeah. um, so I'll start my plugs here. Uh, we are gonna uh, the next episode for Movie Dumpster should be coming out bushwhacked with Daniel Stern. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, certainly a movie that apparently started life as a Home Alone spinoff uh, starring oh. either a reformed Marv or a Marv before he became a wet bandit. I'm not quite sure. Um, but uh, it eventually became something else entirely. And it's this very bizarre physical comedy movie that I kind of like, but kind of was like, eh, I could do without this. I saw a review um, of it that mentioned the trailer a lot. Just going bushwhacked. Yeah. Um, the uh, episode for Howard the Duck came out and we didn't know how timely that would be with Endgame because apparently Howard the Duck is in Endgame if you're eagle-eyed enough. I'm not going to say where. Go find him yourself. Make it a fun little Easter egg hunt. If you're uh, in the spoilers group, I put I put the picture up in the yes. thread. Uh, and coming up, we are going to mm. do Titanic 2, which I've watched a trailer for and it looks just like you imagine it to be. It looks like some Asylum Pictures poppycock where <laughs> people are making jokes about history is about to repeat itself uh, with a straight with a straight ass face. Even, yeah, it, 
it is exploitation at its finest in an era where exploitation was dead. Um, it's it, well, a silent pictures kind of redefined that with like transmorphers and fucking, uh, uh, their other movie that I can't remember the name of it. There was a few others they had. They were just like very offensive. Battle for Los Angeles with like yeah, Cal Mitchell. that one. Um, so those are out. Uh, keep an eye out for those. And that's really all I have to plug right now. So let's move on to somebody else. Yeah. Um, Lost Hero podcast every single week. Usually uh, me and Eric did a sort of an end game reaction because he hadn't, he doesn't have a, million other podcasts that he does <laughs> uh so uh yeah we talked about that we talked about some other smaller movies a movie about a mermaid that's german so go go listen to me talk about that on that show uh and then a monster mash which will happen sometime soon i think i don't i don't know um hunter he fell asleep no he's, he's uh, he fell asleep uh so yeah <laughs> all right um so you can i have 15 other podcasts so you have part of los haro which is legion of tunes i believe our next thing is we are watching that vincent van gogh rotoscope movie and then yeah and now comics which john and connor have been on uh so we talk about comic books and all the stuff coming out we also did an end game kind of thing and then smallville chronicles i do with alan we just finished season three and for our in-between season special we are watching the 1997 Justice League of America pilot. Oh, good luck. Uh, oh, the the pilot that stars a Ray Palmer, a um, Ice Fire, Barry Allen, the Flash. So it's our second appearance of a Flash on TV and the only live action appearance of Guy Gardner. And there's oh, only two people oh in my. this show oh I know that I know, which is Michelle Hurd, who is in Daredevil, and then David Krumholtz, which isn't even a main character. Oh, oof. and there's a very fat John Jones in it, apparently. Yeah, the, I remember seeing uh, it's about that, and like the Justice League lineup is really weird. Yes, yeah, it's Guy Gardner, Fire, Ice, Fla- Barry Allen, Flash, and Ray Palmer. And Ice is a news reporter. I don't know, it's gonna be interesting. All right, and that does it for me, John. Um. Follow me on Twitter, jamscott193, and I'm bouncing around being the hired help in the Phantom Zone groups. You know, fun stuff like that. ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling I swear, where is John? He's very late for the podcast. <laughs> is that He's late. Have, He's late. I, I appreciate that. There's like Hunter Davenport, Constant Professional, and then there's John Scott, the hired help. Well, uh, yeah. Lou is the diversity hire. Uh, hey, I'm diversity hire. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Get in your place, Lou. Um, just kidding. Um, so that's it, everybody. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite movie specials we've done so far. So I hope everyone enjoys this. Uh, and Eric's not here to derail us with something gross. I've seen a picture of someone reading a book on a bus called Placenta, the Forgotten Chakra. So I'll leave it. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Same thing that happens to everyone.